All right, advanced math day. Here we go. We've got lesson 3.2.1, algebra tiles, and we're only going to do the perimeter section for this lesson um, for reasons that I'll tell you later. But anyways, so we're only going to do perimeter here. So we've got different shapes here, and I don't know if you can see it, but the inside of this shape is saying y squared. That's the area of that shape. And the inside of this shape says x squared. Anytime you don't see anything in the shape like this one, that means it's a one by one. So what we want to do here is we want to find the area of these shapes. Sorry, man, I started running. All right, so if we know that this is y squared, then we know that it is y times y around that shape. And we want to find the perimeter, which is the outside of the shape. Okay, so that's y times y. And we said that this one here is x squared. So this means that this is x and x. And we said this is a 1 by 1. So this is 1 and 1. All right, so let's see if I can finish off some of my perimeter. This section up here would have to also be y, because this is one big y squared. Okay, uh, this section right here, what is that? Oh, it looks like I could say that this is y and then take away x. I could do that, but I can actually do something that's a little bit easier. What I could do is I could say that since I've already got, I'm trying to find a color that will work here. Since I've already got this part here, and then if I add it to this part here, this part plus this part would make this entire side, would it not? Yes, it would. So this part here and this part here would make a Y together. Like if we boop, boop, put that there, that total length would be Y. So I'm going to ignore this part here, and I'm just gonna say this whole part here, which covers this section and this section, that that's going to be Y. Okay, so now all I have to worry about is this section here. Well, that part, if I look at it as this section here and then this section here, those two sections together should be this length of x over here. So this one and this one is x, so I'll get rid of this y because I'm not or one because I'm not going to use it. And I'll say this plus this would be x. Now the only thing I haven't connected here is this one right there, and that's 1. So here's what we're going to do. Sorry, my nose is running. We've got y plus y plus y plus all of this is y. How many y's do we have? We have four y's. Let's look for our x's. I've got x up here. And then these two parts together make x. So I've got 2x. And then I've got a 1 here and a 1 here. So plus 2. So that would be our perimeter of our shape. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, in our next shape, this part, don't know if you can see it or not, but that part says that that one is x times y. And this part here, these long ones here, say that those are all y's. So remember, these are the areas. And then this part here says that this area is x. So here's what I know. Since this one is x times y, and this one is y, this length here must be at blue. This length here must be y, and this length here must be x. 
So this is x times y for the area inside that shape. And that's why this area is x, y. Now this one says y here. So right here we've got y, and this is y. So if the area is y, these must be 1s. 1, 1, and 1. Because 1 times y would be 1y in there. This last section is x. So this must be 1, and this must be x right here. Because it's 1 times x equals x. All right, so now we need to find the area of the entire shape. Well, down here we've got 1, 1, and 1. Here we've got x. Here we've got x, because this is x times y to make x, y. The only section that we have here that's a little bit weird is we've got this section here. And I don't know how long that section is. But here's what I do know. If I add this section here and this section here, together, those would make y. Right? Because this section and then this one right here. So if I keep on going down, that's a whole length of y there. So I'm going to get rid of this one right here. And I'm just going to say that from here all the way down, that's a y. So how many y's do I have? I've got one, two y's. How many x's do I have? I've got one, two, three, four x's. How many ones do I have on the perimeter? One, two, three, four, five, six. So plus six. There's my perimeter. All right, we got a methods and meaning section for this one. Methods and meaning is talking about expressions. Remember, an expression is when you don't have an equal sign. So it's just like one half of an equation. Okay. Uh, anytime that we've got a plus or minus inside of an expression, so this is an expression, we call each one of these individual components a term. So this one has three terms. The numbers, so on a term, the number in front is called a coefficient. And then if we have a term that doesn't have a variable, we call that a constant term. Polynomials are when we have multiple terms being added or subtracted to each other. So what we had up here and then this one right here, we would call polynomials. So this is a polynomial because it has one, two, three terms. And we would actually call that a trinomial because it has three terms to it. If it had two terms, we'd call it a binomial. Uh, if it has only one term, we'd call it a monomial. So... These would be terms. So a polynomial is an expression which only has terms of the form, any real number, and then x to some power. So you can't have 2 to the x. That would not be a term or it wouldn't be a polynomial. You can't have that. All right. So here we've got a polynomial here. 7x to the fifth, so any real number, x to a power. 2.5, that's a real number, x to the third, that works. 1 half, that's a real number, x to the first. And then remember, 7, this would be x to the zero, so that one would work. Okay, so monomials would just be one single term. Binomials would be when we have two terms. And then trinomials is three terms. All right, so just a lot of uh, terminology that you might be expected to know from here on out. All right, that's all I got. Short one. Be good.